20 years strong in the industry. You could almost call her a pillar of the Australian comedy circuit. She's talented, a little bit sexy, sarcastic, funny as, and has a voice that, well, you could not not recognise. Please welcome to the show the adorable Judith Lucy. Judith, how are you, my beautiful friend? I'm overwhelmed by that introduction, Troy, and um, I will say, I probably shouldn't admit this, but I, because I know the press release does say 20 years since my show, King of the Road, whereas it's actually 27 years oh. that I've been doing stand-up comedy, so I'm not so much as a pillar as a hack, but thank <laughs> you very much. A cornerstone. Look, I, actually, I wanted to pick up your, your PR people, because I, I did read 20 years, and with my own research, I think I calculated 23 or 24, but I wasn't quite sure. So I thought I'll just, I'll just stick to 20 just to be safe so I don't offend you. Oh, I am so beyond being offended at this stage <laughs> of my life, Troy, really. I, I, in fact, don't know what you could possibly say that would offend me. But, you know, feel free to try. Oh, look, I, I was going to say, that sounds like a challenge, Judith. It sounds like a challenge, and I, I will endeavour to do that somehow uh, in this interview. If I get a hang-up... Excellent. Hang up, if, if yeah, I, the, the, that would be great, although hanging up is nowhere near as satisfying as it used to be. I think <laughs> was it Seinfeld that did a routine about that because now all you get to do is press a button, whereas, you know, in the good old days you could slam down a receiver, which oh. I can't really do. But anyway, let's yeah. see what happens. You can give a good, firm pressing of that iPhone button. <laughs> and, or, or, and I could just start swearing at you. That could happen too. Hey, look, we, we can do that here on this show. It's, it's, all, it's all allowed. Really? Yeah. Oh, you drop whatever bomb you want. So I could just say, well, fuck you, Troy, and hang up. And I'd say, fuck you, Judith, and uh, continue with the interview. <laughs> and this is Breakfast Radio. <laughs> Why wasn't Rick I allowed to talk like this when I was on Today FM? It oh. could have been a whole different story. That's because you, you, you're governed by the broadcasting laws of Australia, whereas on internet radio, uh, where we broadcast to the world, we don't have to abide by stupid rules like that. Yeah, I um, I can only say that I'm extremely jealous. <laughs> well, Judith, uh, you're more than welcome to come and join us any time you like on the show if you want to come and car host and drop F-bombs all morning. That is something I will bear in mind, let's be frank. <laughs> I'll never do it, but it's lovely to have the offer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. I, I feel as though, Judith, uh, I, I need, I've need. got a coffee in my hand. I feel as though we need like a glass of wine or, or a few tequila shots uh, as we do this interview. Are you, feeling the, are you getting the same vibe? Well, you know, when they did sack me from doing breakfast <laughs> radio, uh, the management did actually say to me in the, in the nicest possible way, they did say, yeah, you might might not really be cut out for breakfast radio. <laughs> and I suspect that's what they were actually referring to, that I have the sort of voice and persona that is much more suited to night time. <laughs> you don't really want to wake up with me. I think you want to pass out with me. So, yeah, I, I, I hear what you're saying. I'll take you up on that offer, Judith. I'd, I'd love to pass out with you one day. It's a very long list of people who have, <laughs> Troy. I do, in fact, uh, mention a story in the show where I talk about how I once um, passed out in a restaurant toilet because oh. I'm uh, a sophisticated person and, um, and a foodie, obviously. Yeah. And how, in fact, a gay male friend of mine I had to climb the wall and jump into the toilet and wake me up. And I will say that that friend and I have never, ever discussed the incident, and I have absolutely no idea what he saw. But I don't think you'll be shocked by this, Troy. Whatever he saw did not turn him into a heterosexual. <laughs> Isn't that what gay friends are for? Um, well, mine, mine have been there for me many, many times. There was another time I passed out in a, ho in a hotel hallway, and my friend had to, uh, that's right, because I had one of those sort of key cards that oh, wasn't yes. working. And uh, my friend said, oh, look, don't you worry, I'll go back down to reception and uh, get another one for you. And in the meantime, I lost consciousness and was simply <laughs> passed out in the hallway. 
But it's a lovely image because he had to open the door, which kept shutting, and keep that open with one leg while he picked up me by the ankle and dragged me into the room. <laughs> so, oh, so many good times. Oh, as a gay man, I think I've held back many a lady friend's hair as they've vomited after a big night out. I but th- you see, Troy, that's where I draw the line. I really need to say this. I feel that there are a couple of things and they usually involve a toilet that simply need to be done alone. Yeah. And never in my life has anyone held my hair back when I was vomiting. I'm a lone wolf when it comes <laughs> to vomit, all right? I don't, I don't want anyone anywhere near me when that is going on. Yeah, a, a solo porcelain pony rider. Exactly. Yeah. Now, uh, your show, which is coming to Sydney, which we're super excited about, uh, it's, it's, it's got to do with a moth. Well, your promo gear has got to do with, with a moth. I've, I've seen the, the, the posters. It's got you in a, a, a moth costume. What's going on with a moth? Um, does it really matter? Because let's be honest, I make an adorable moth. I, I, <laughs> I can honestly say that that poster has gotten a better response than anything else I've ever done. The number of people who have said to me, you really look pretty hot as a sad moth. Really? And in fact, yeah. And in fact, one friend said to me, I think from here on in, it should just be a different insect for each show. <laughs> so, you know, next time around, I could be a praying mantis. <laughs> look, basically, Troy, Underneath all the very, very cheap gags, uh, you know, such as, uh, well, I, at, well, at one point I talk about the fact that you can actually get mints for your vagina. I Ooh. don't know if you're aware of that. No, I, I'm and, not very versed with vaginas. <laughs> well, no, I, I, I'm across that, Troy, but uh, I, not many people know that these things are available. They're actually called... You can look this up, Linga, the internal feminine flavouring system that will make you smell and taste like a candy cane. And all I can say, Troy, is let that be a warning to the kids next Halloween because, quite <laughs> frankly, next time a woman says trick or treat, you don't know what the hell she's offering you. I'm going to ask, ha- you- have you given it a go? Um, no, I have not given it a go. But anyway, that's the sort of sophisticated level of the humour of the show. But underneath... All of that, there is a bit of a, a theme of change and impermanence. And so I thought, oh, I, I want the show to have some sort of mystifying, deep sort of Buddhist quote for a, a, a title. But anyway, that didn't pan out, of course. I just Googled it. And I came up with that. And uh, that is, in fact, a line from a 12th century Sufi mystic poem called Conference of the Birds. And the whole quote is, I have no questions of my coming or passing away. The whole thing happened quicker than a breath, ask no questions of the moth. So that's how I got the title. And then my manager said to me, well, you know, uh, he also manages Sam Simmons, who you may or may not remember, had a show on the ABC a few years back. And there was a recurring moth sketch that involved Susie Porter and Gary Sweet. So we, um, we've you know, we've got the same same representation. So my yeah. manager Kev said, "We've still got the moth costume. Oh, Why no. don't you pop on Susie Porter's moth costume?" So that's how that came about. <laughs> I've got to say, Judith, I'm not a fan of the moth. What uh, moths I, I, in general, or well, me as a moth? Well, a, bit, a little bit of both, really. I, I I saw the moth costume and went meh. And moths in general, well, I, I, don't, I don't know whether it's a scent I put out, but I have a, a really bad habit of being attacked by moths. Yeah, Troy, I don't really know if that's my problem. No, it's not. And it's my problem. I don't, uh, yeah, it is your problem. <laughs> and I've got to say, Sydney, it's the last bunch of shows I'm doing, so yeah. I'm sort of beyond caring whether you <laughs> like me in the moth costume or not. And frankly, I've been nominated for a helpman award, so they obviously liked it. Oh, as long as they like it. <laughs> now, I have to ask, apart from the, the obvious, why shall we not ask? Uh, questions of the moth. Oh, Jesus, I don't know, Troy. It's a quote from a poem. Yeah, That's well, all it is. Okay, because I, as, as, I I, as soon as I read that, I went, well, moths can't talk, so you, you can't ask a moth a question. It's just... You, you know what, Troy? Just let the moth thing go. All right. You I, know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I think you're getting a, a little bit too hung up on the moth thing, <laughs> and it's a comedy show. You yes. know, it's not check off. It's I, I'm just cracking some gags. So <laughs> there's, no, there's no big hidden meaning about the moth. It was a line I got off the computer 
computer. We had a moth costume. I put it on. They took a photograph. That's really the end of the story. All right. Uh, you, I, I read you're, you're dating a man. How's that going? <laughs> I that do good. enjoy the way you've gone. You're dating a man. Yeah. Uh, what, what were my other options? Well, I've also read the... A ch- woman, uh, obviously. Oh, well, yeah, I've, I've read those rumours too. Did- oh, everyone thinks I'm a lesbian. And the truth is that while I have pashed a number of ladies and I've really given it a good hot go over the years, I'm afraid I just like cock at the end of the day, Troy. Well, so, we- in fact, I have always been a heterosexual. Okay, well, at least we've got that in common, the, the liking the cock part, not the heterosexual part. But uh, did you go any further with, with the ladies or just the, 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 uh, the, the passion? Uh, just the past. In fact, I, I told a story at the end of my last One Woman show where um, I I really, I've been single for years. I was really liked this particular lady a lot. Uh, if I was, if I was going to go for a chick, she was the one. And um, I remember we, we kissed and that was really fantastic. Although it was a little bit of an out of body experience. And then I was actually telling this story to a couple of lesbian friends, and I said, look, I, you know, that was kind of as far as I could go. And they said, oh, were you a bit worried about going downstairs? And I said, no, no, no. I said, I hadn't gotten that far. I was actually freaking out about touching a closed breast. Oh. And, it, it, you know, frankly, Troy, that's ridiculous because breasts are really quite wonderful. I mean, honestly, who doesn't like a breast? Oh, look, I'm going to put my hand up. I love a good breast. Well, exactly. I mean, I don't care if you're a man, woman, straight or gay, breasts are great. You know, saying you don't like breasts is like saying you don't like party pies, and yet (laughs) I just couldn't do it. So, no, I'm afraid that's uh, that's where I drew the line, and that's as far as I've ever gone, is just the pash. Fair enough. We are chatting to Judith Lucy here on the Andrew and Troy Show. Stick around. Judith Lucy will continue chatting with us.